Brianna waited impatiently in the cinema parking lot. Her date was 40 minutes late. Just as she was about to leave, the car door pulled open without warning. Whoa, gotcha! Are you a clumsy dummy, or did you plan this to fall into my arms? How would I plan- Ugh, never mind. We've probably missed half the movie, Elijah. I booked a hall just for us. The movie starts when I say it starts, babe. Once the lights went off, Brianna turned pale. The ring? I told you, I hate horror movies. But you don't know what you're missing. You're gonna love it, sweet cheeks. Trust me. Brianna cringed as she watched with eyes half closed, and at one point, she screamed and jumped off her seat. That's it. I'm leaving. You call yourself an actress, but you can't appreciate this masterpiece? You're such a baby. And you're such a jerk. I don't know why I agreed to this. Want me to call you an ambulance, baby Brianna? Brianna dumped her popcorn on his head before storming out. And then she walked straight into somebody carrying sodas and fell on her butt. Brianna, are you okay? Jeez, can this night get any worse? Uh, yeah, there are infinite possibilities. You could get struck by lightning or get robbed or be kidnapped or get hit by a bus. Then there are serial killers. It wasn't really a question, dude. <sighs> I'm sorry. I wasn't looking. I'll pay for the drinks. I can take care of this. Thanks. Um, what's your name? Wow, you don't even know my name? Why would I? I know your name. Yeah, because I'm, well, famous. What's your excuse? I'm in your biology class. I joined your school three weeks ago. Brianna was embarrassed. The teacher did introduce some new scholarship kid, but I've hardly noticed him since. It's okay. I'm not offended. It's what I'd expect from someone like you. I'm Charlie. I'll see you around. He smiled and walked away, and Brianna felt kind of bothered. What did he mean, someone like me? Charlie knew Brianna wasn't kidding about being famous. He had seen some of her TV show on Stargirl. At school, she was surrounded by girls just like her and guys who changed sports cars faster than clothes. Of course she hasn't noticed someone like me. The three most popular girls in school chilling at a pool party was a sight to behold. Their leader, Madison, was a rich socialite and model, and her childhood bestie Amber was an Instagram influencer who started the weirdest fashion trends. But the most popular right now was Brianna, who'd joined them in eighth grade and shot to fame with her teen TV series. People called them the Barbie Angels because they screamed perfection, but they weren't feeling great lately. Things are starting to get boring. It's not a challenge to get any of these guys around us, and it's even harder to lose them. I made out with a red-haired model last week, and later my boyfriend found a red hair on my sweater. I said I'd hugged a sad clown on my way home, and he actually believed me. I dumped his stupid butt. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I went on a horrible date with Elijah, and he texted me to say he was going to Korea, and we'd go out again once he returned. What made him think that would happen? Crazy, right? Ugh, even blind guys are drooling over me. I feel you, girl. Remember my blind stalker who tried to climb my bedroom window, but he fell down and was taken to the hospital? Ugh, so clumsy. <laughs> yeah, what a dummy. Girls, we need to spice things up. I want to find someone really different. Make him fall in love with me, mess around with him, and then dump him. Wouldn't that be fun for us? OMG, yes. I haven't felt this excited since the 11th Harry Potter book came out. Just then, something caught Brianna's eye, and she left. I wasn't even done talking. Amber, do you feel sometimes that she isn't as nice as before, and her fame's gone to her head? Her head does look a bit smaller than usual. Anyway, who cares, Maddie? You've got me. I'm your favorite girl, right? You know you are, babe. Brianna had spotted the DJ at the party, and it it was Charlie, looking much cuter. Wow, you're full of surprises, DJ Charlie. What? I said, you're full of surprises, DJ Charlie. Uh, Brianna, I heard you the first time. Then why did you say what? I just meant, what's the surprise? Oh, well, you're a scholarship student, so I thought you'd be a nerd. Didn't imagine you as a DJ. <laughs> Guess you have a limited imagination then. My imagination's just fine, thanks. In case you didn't know, I co-wrote the series I acted in, the one that's really famous. That reality show with a bunch of rich girls doing rich things? Yeah, my co-worker made me watch a few episodes. I'll have to get your autograph for her sometime. She's a huge fan. And with that, Charlie switched up the music louder. Every time I speak to him, why do I end up feeling insulted? Oh, so annoying. I have just the guy for Project Plaything, Maddie. See the DJ? Hmm. 
Hmm, his tacky t-shirt. But he's kind of cute. Why him? He's nothing like the guys we date. He's a scholarship student in my bio class, and he seems unimpressed by everyone at our school, including us. Well, that's new. I love a good challenge. The question is, will he buy it? The most popular girl in school suddenly notices him? He might think it's a prank. We'll just have to make it believable then. Plus, no guy is immune to my charms, Bri Bri. He'll be eating out of my hands in no time. Like a baby shark. I don't think it'll be so easy. Easy, but I'm looking forward to it. The girl's first move was to get Madison on Charlie's radar and paint her as an angel. So two days later, Charlie found Madison walking into the cinema, who he instantly recognized as Brianna's friend, and she had a line of kids behind her. Hi, could I please have 30 tickets for the new Minion movie and whatever snacks the kids want? Are these kids from an orphanage? Yeah, I volunteer there, and I thought I'd treat them. It's not often that they get to go out, so I want them to have a really good time. Wow, she doesn't even have a PR team taking pictures. Charlie led the excited kids into the theater, and as he was leaving, Madison touched his arm. Wait, you were the DJ at a pool party recently, right? Right. I, uh, also go to your school. How did I not know that? Oh, don't beat yourself up. I'm super easy to miss. I'm like a pigeon in a school of peacocks, but I prefer my own company anyway. It's the best. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Well, thanks for your help today. Madison kissed him on the cheek, and Charlie smiled awkwardly before running off. Was the most popular girl in school just flirting with me? Nah, she she probably flirts with everybody. Later, Maddie called the others to update them. Do you think he bought your act? Of course. I'm beginning to think I'm a better actress than you are, and this is gonna be a lot easier than I thought. The next day, when Madison walked into the cafeteria, she spotted Charlie in a corner, and his eyes were already on her. She helped a kid with crutches get his lunch and tipped a janitor generously before making her way to Charlie's table. Hi, do you mind if I sit here? Uh, of course not. Yes, uh, please, please sit. Um, I am sitting. Oh, righto. Uh, you want half my sandwich? My grandma made it. The filling is probably this week's leftovers mixed together, and the bread is a bit stale, but it's not bad. I think the gravy she put inside is making it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Moist. Yeah, it's it's moist. Tempting, but I haven't had bread in years. Just then, Charlie noticed that half the cafeteria was staring at them. They're thinking what I'm thinking. What is a beautiful, rich model doing with me? This is clearly a prank. You know, I just remembered. The library and ask me to feed her fish, and they'll die if I don't do it right now. Really? Well, I can come with you. No, uh, I'd rather you didn't, okay? They like their privacy, the fish. They're private people. She stared at him, and he felt more flustered as he reached for his bag and ended up stepping hard on her toe. He turned to apologize and knocked his sandwich on her clothes. I am so sorry. So sorry. Gotta run. And later in the bathroom as Maddie cleaned up, Brianna and Amber howled. <sighs> Will you two stop laughing? He had to feed the librarian's fish? <laughs> Girl, that is the lamest thing I have ever heard. He couldn't get away fast enough. <laughs> oh, that was so funny, too. My grandma made me this gravy sandwich. Yeah, right. His grandma came back from the dead to make him a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his grandma is just alive? But both my grandmas are dead. Aren't everyone's grandmas dead? Oh my god, focus! He seemed smitten with me when I took those gross kids to the movies. Why is he running away from me now? Maybe I just make him really nervous. Or maybe he isn't stupid and he's not buying your sudden interest in him. Well, you're in the same class with him. Do something. I'll get the teacher to make me his lab partner tomorrow. Let's see what I can pull off. Charlie just wanted some peace, but the universe literally said no when he got paired up in the lab with Brianna. Are we really gonna open up that frog? There's no way I'm touching that thing. Charlie ignored her and started doing it himself. Oh my god, look at those intestines. Ew, I'm gonna throw up. Why don't you just stop looking at the frog? It's not like you're helping me. Yeah, that sounds good. Anyway, I have to talk to you about something. I think Madison's really into you. Don't ask me why. The heart wants what it wants. So, I was wondering, what do you think about her? Brianna, I don't know what you girls are up to, but I don't have time for this. I'm just here to study hard so I can get into a good college, and Madison can literally have any guy. What do girls like you want with a poor nobody like me? Wow, you just made us sound so arrogant and judgmental, but you've basically written us off without even knowing us. Look, I didn't mean... Yeah, you did. You think girls like us wouldn't like a poor guy since we're shallow, right? And yeah, Maddie could have any guy, but maybe she saw something different in you. Trust me, if it was 
fancy things we wanted, we don't need a guy for that. Charlie felt unsure. Maddie is beautiful, and she seemed sweet. Maybe I misjudged her. So, how'd it go? Brilliantly. I think I've convinced him a bit that you're genuinely into him. We've got to keep the ball rolling. Let's find out more about Charlie's personal life. Madison hired a private investigator and found out that Charlie lived with his grandma. She also found out that he worked in a small club as a DJ on weekends. We know where we're going tonight. Oh, please say Tokyo. I've been craving sushi for weeks. No, to this nightclub, silly. But I'll take you for sushi anywhere after the success of Project Plaything. Later, when the Barbie angels walked into the small club, all eyes turned to them, and Charlie was just as surprised. This really wasn't their kind of place. Once he sees my heart-stopping dance moves, he'll be following me around like a lovesick puppy. The girls moved to the dance floor and had everyone's attention. As the song ended, Madison walked over to Charlie. The music here is amazing. You're really talented. Gee, thanks. Listen, Madison, I- I've been avoiding you, but I want to say I'm sorry. For that day in the cafeteria, I was such an idiot. I'll forgive you if you dance with me. Oh, no. There- there's a reason why I'm in charge of the music. Those who can't do, teach. Those who can't dance, DJ. <laughs> Come on. It can't be that bad. Just put a song on and join me. No, really. Just then, Maddie lost her balance a little, and her drink fell all over the music dashboard. Two seconds later, it stopped working. Oh, my God. What did you do? It was an accident. The system fried. The club owner's gonna fire me. You came in here just for your fun and games, but this is serious business for me, Madison. Thanks for nothing. Charlie instantly felt awful as he realized everybody was staring at them, and Madison stood frozen in her spot. Then she burst into tears and ran out. Amber and Brianna ran after Madison to her car, where she lost it. Who the heck does he think he is? You're not crying? Of course not, and it took all my willpower to not claw his eyes out. How dare he humiliate me? me like that. Oh, once he falls in love with me, I'm gonna squish him like a bug. That was brilliant. Now he's gonna feel terrible because you didn't even lash out at him. And he'll think you're the sweetest angel on earth. Oh, I underestimated you, Maddie. You're the worst. I am the worst. And when I'm done with him, he's gonna wish he was dead. Charlie just couldn't face Madison in school the next day. And after a lot of begging, he finally managed to get her number from Brianna. Little did he know, the girls had decided that Brianna would be the one to talk to him, pretending to be Maddie, because she was the smoothest talker. Charlie felt super nervous as he called her that night. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hello. I mean, hello. Hi. Madison? It's me. <clears throat> Charlie. What do you want? Listen, before you hang up, please don't hang up. I'm really, really sorry. I just lost it and you didn't deserve that. And you didn't even scream at me or hit me, which you should have. You still can. Charlie, I get it. You freaked out. I hope you didn't get fired. I did. But it's okay. I- I'll find another gig. I'm sorry. Are you for real? Don't say sorry to me. Do you think we could just start over? Yeah, I'd like that. Hi, I'm Charlie. Nerd by day, DJ by night, and I get free popcorn once a month at the cinema. You go. I'm Madison, and I'm a famous model. Also, I've been on a diet since forever, so I don't remember what popcorn tastes like anymore. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. The two ended up talking and laughing for hours, and she kept surprising him. She was funny, well-read, and had great taste in music. It was 4 a.m. when they finally said goodnight. I can't remember the last time I had such a good conversation with someone. The next day, Brianna updated Maddie on everything they'd talked about, but she didn't see Charlie in her biology class. The girls hadn't seen him at recess either, so Brianna sent him a text as Maddie, and he replied, Grandma broke her hip this morning. I'm at the hospital. If you really want to seal the deal with Charlie, you should go see his grandma. Ew, I hate old people with their wrinkly skins and their weird smell. Come on, they're cute. Just be nice to her. Charlie will love it. Should I really interact with her? I don't think I could be nice to an old woman. Brianna then thought of a better idea. After three days, Charlie's grandma was discharged, but he had one problem, the hospital bill. He decided to talk to the hospital staff about paying in installments, but then they told him that someone had already settled it. What? Who? The person had chosen to be anonymous, but Charlie insisted so much that the staff revealed the sender's identity. Madison. Why did you do it, Madison? What do you mean? You paid my grandmom's hospital bill and tried to hide it. Why? Because I knew you wouldn't accept the money if I offered it to you, and I made you lose your gig. It's the least I could do. I care about you, Charlie. You can have any guy you want, Maddie. Why me? 
Well, I've dated enough guys from my circle to know they're not very nice people. They're mostly after my money or fame or my parents' influence, and you don't care about any of that. You're like a breath of fresh air. But if you don't feel the same way, I won't hold it against you. Charlie was about to reply when his grandma called him, but he couldn't stop thinking about Maddie. What she did for me is amazing, but I feel scared about falling for someone like her. Charlie hadn't come back to school for a week, but he and Brianna had been exchanging texts, as Maddie, of course. She was laughing at a meme he'd just sent when she found Elijah by her locker. Ugh, why is he back? Just read something funny? Tell me, babe. I love a good joke. Excuse me? You were just laughing at your phone? I hope it's a joke and not a boy whose butt I have to kick. What are you, my dad? Because you're definitely not my boyfriend. Stay out of my business and don't call me babe again. I've forgiven you for the last tantrum, Bree. Now tell me where you'd like to have our next date. How do I spell this out for you? There won't be a next- Brianna, is this guy bothering you? Charlie, you're back. No. We're done here. Who's this loser? Did you wander here by mistake from some homeless shelter? Just leave him alone, Elijah. Charlie turned around to see Maddie, and his heart skipped a beat. What happened while I was gone? Since when did you girls start mingling with nobodies like him? Suddenly, Charlie walked over to Maddie, and he pulled her close. There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. I've missed you. And then he kissed her on the lips, and Brianna was even more surprised than Maddie at Charlie's move. Elijah Aww. gritted his teeth and walked away. Wow, what was that about? I've been wanting to say it the whole week, but not on the phone. I do feel the same way. I care about you too, Maddie, a lot. Madison hugged him and smirked at Brianna. Once everyone knew that Maddie and Charlie were dating, his life in school took a 360 degree turn. People stopped to smile at him, say hello, crack jokes. Why does it feel like even the teachers are nicer to me? The other two Barbie angels welcomed him into their gang, and being with Madison was a dream. They went on long walks, watched sunset, ate ice cream, and kissed on top of a Ferris wheel. But later that night, Brianna and Amber cringed hearing Maddie throw up. Is Charlie trying to kill me? That gross ice cream at the amusement park made me sick, and my feet hurt from the long walks. And what is so fascinating about freaking sunsets? I think it's sweet. Yeah, because you're not the one suffering. But there is one thing about Charlie. He sure can kiss. Makes you feel like you're the only girl in the world. Ugh, please, spare us the makeout details. Okay, okay. Listen, Brianna, try giving him a hint about planning fancier dates for me. I know he's poor, but come on, he's dating me. The next day, while Charlie was watching football practice, the ball suddenly came in his direction, and he gave it a strong kick back. Hey, kid. You play football? I used to, but I don't have time now. Come on, grab some shoes and join for a game. Just then, Charlie caught Elijah looking at him like he was a buck, and that motivated him. Elijah was coming at him aggressively, but Charlie dodged him and kicked the ball straight into the goalpost. Charlie, you're a natural. You have to join the team. Sir, I really don't think I can commit to practice. Kid, just try it out for a month and see if it works, okay? Elijah... You better watch out. He's going to give you a run for your money. Charlie ran off to the locker room to put back the cleat. But when he walked out, someone had pushed him to the ground. What the heck, dude? I just don't understand why a low-class idiot like you is in this school. I'm here on scholarship, which means I earned my spot here. But that doesn't mean you belong here. Well, Maddie doesn't think so. And the coach... Don't let the coach's stupid words get to your head. And as for Maddie... <laughs> Gosh, you're a moron. Do you really think? Just then, someone pushed Elijah away hard. Dude, seriously, what is wrong with you? Why are you jumping to his defense? Because he's my friend. And what, are you threatened by a little competition on the field? Oh, please. This loser just had beginner's luck today. I'll crush him next time. And he won't have mommy out there to defend him. <laughs> Elijah and his friends went out laughing as Charlie picked up his bag and fished out a broken snow globe. Great, this was for Maddie. She's so excited about her vote photo shoot coming out and I wanted to give her something thoughtful. What was this supposed to be? It was a guy, but instead of arms he had wings, like a fan, and it said I'm your number one fan. Oh god, I I'm glad it's broken. It it's so lame. <laughs> no, it's cute. Yeah, maybe you could do something a little extra. Rent a car, get some flowers, go out for a nice dinner. Girls like being pampered. Wow, yeah, that sounds nice. Thanks, Brianna. Also for saving my butt. Also for calling me your friend. <sighs> You're welcome. This is the place you were raving about? And why don't you have a reservation? It's walk-ins only, but it's so worth the wait. After 30 minutes, when they finally got a table, the place was dirty and loud. Isn't the energy of this place something else? Yeah, it's something.
Oh my god, I just felt something on my foot! Maybe it was my foot. But just then, a mouse jumped onto Maddie's lap. She screamed and started jumping around like a maniac. Then she tripped on her dress and went crashing straight into another table. Ah! Oh. My. God. Madison, I am so sorry. Why would you bring me to this horrible place? And did you see all those people who were making videos of me? This is gonna be all over the internet. I get why you're upset, but you know, today's video is tomorrow's old news. No one remembers these things. Excuse me? Are you gonna explain to me how fame works? People don't forget anything. Once something's on the internet, it stays there forever. People can pull it out anytime they want. Ugh, this is officially the worst day of my life. With that, Madison stormed out of the car. Brianna couldn't stop laughing as she watched Madison's video posted online. But now, she had to do some damage control. So she called him as Maddie. I've had some time to cool down, and I'm sorry for going off on you like that. And I'm sorry about the mouse and the video. You're right. I don't know what it's like to be famous. It's the best and the worst. It's great to have people look up to you, but sometimes they talk about you like you're not even a real person. And imagine having your failures or embarrassing moments splashed across the news as entertainment. It sounds brutal. I'm almost glad I'm a poor nobody. As they were talking, Charlie ended up telling Brianna all about his amazing grandma and how she'd made him apply to the school. I just want to get myself into a good university so I can make something of myself and spoil my grandma rotten. She deserves the whole world. Well, you're definitely the guy who'd get it for her, Charlie. Over the next few weeks, Charlie found himself bewitched and confused by Madison. He felt closer than ever over their late night talk, but in person, she was totally unpredictable. One moment, she'd be all all over him and the next she was snapping his head off charlie do you think i'm fat um no why did you pause before answering what no i didn't yes you did you said um no you even looked at me before replying i shouldn't have looked why would you look don't you just know maddie you're being irrational now i'm crazy am i well i'm not fat i'm pmsing so i'm bloated I hadn't noticed, really. Ugh, you're so insensitive. You have no idea what it's like to go through this every month. Right now, I feel like killing someone. And I also really want that Thai red curry ice cream. I'll get it for you, babe. Whatever helps you feel better. You getting out of my face would make me feel better. And yes, the ice cream. Now. You got it. Amber and Maddie started <laughs> laughing hard as soon as Charlie was gone. <laughs> I really hope he gets a few tubs of that ice cream. Sounds delicious. I'm pretty sure there's no Thai red curry ice cream, but let's see what he does. Anyway, for Christmas, my parents and I are going to our ski resort as usual, and I'm inviting you girls with your parents. Should I invite Charlie? You have to, right? He's your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. And at least three of my exes will be there. And I'd rather not show up single. But I'm gonna have to give Charlie a makeover before I take him. On his first day at the resort, Charlie slipped out of his room at 5 in the morning and found Brianna waiting in the kitchen. Oh, you're here. I almost thought you wouldn't come. I almost thought that too. I don't know why I agreed to the early morning skiing lesson. Because you're a good person and you like me? I'm just saving Maddie some embarrassment. Because you'll definitely make a fool of yourself without my help. Couldn't agree more. They headed out to one of the smaller slopes, and she explained skiing techniques to him. I think you're ready. Well, as ready as you'll ever be. If I die, please break the news gently to Grandma. You play football against Elijah. You'll survive this too. Now don't be a wuss. Time to go! Brianna whizzed down the slope, and the cold wind in her face made her feel alive. She turned around to look at Charlie, who looked like a baby goat learning to walk. Charlie, just loosen up! Come on, I'm racing you down to the end! Charlie took deep breaths and relaxed. He was gaining momentum and actually starting to enjoy it. Brianna was flying ahead effortlessly, but he was catching up. But then suddenly, he was going too fast. He tried to slow down, but he just couldn't. And moments later, he felt himself crashing straight into Brianna and they went tumbling into the snow. Oh my god, Brianna, are you alive? Is your neck broken? Please don't die. Say something. Oh, can you shut up for just one second? Yes, of course. Oh, I thought I'd killed you. Charlie pulled her into a bear hug. You're really okay? Yeah. 
I just got the wind knocked out of me. Imagine the headlines if something had happened to you. Stupid worthless nobody injures beautiful teen goddess. You... you think I'm beautiful? Well, duh. That's not even opinion. It's just a scientific fact. The sun rises in the east, water boils at 100 degrees, Brianna's beautiful. You got some snow on your face. As they started making their way back, Brianna felt her heart racing. Oh, shake it off, Brianna. You cannot be attracted to your best friend's fake boyfriend. After an exhausting day of skiing, Charlie wanted to crash, but he had to dress up for a fancy dinner instead. The seats next to Maddie were taken, so he quickly took one next to Brianna. Please tell me, why are there six forks in front of me, and which one can I use to stab myself in the eye? Oh, definitely the meat fork for a quick death. Madison watched the two laughing, and she didn't like it. I don't want her getting more attention than me, even if it's from stupid Charlie. Hey, Charlie, could you sit next to Amber, please? Her parents couldn't come, and she, um, broke up with her boyfriend. She could use some cheering up. Charlie nodded reluctantly and took the seat next to Amber. So, Amber, you want to talk about your breakup? Um, okay, sure, why not? It happened three years ago, and his name was Leo. And that's what you're sad about today? That's a bit offensive. I'm not sad. Do I look sad to you? Charlie was relieved as they were served their first fish court, but Amber was staring down at her plate in tears. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. <sighs> What are you talking about? You will be missed, Nemo. Right, Charlie? Tell him he'll be missed. Uh, yeah, you will be missed, Nemo. Just then, Brianna's mom, who was sitting opposite him, spoke. So, Charlie, where were you studying before? Uh, well, I was in public school in another town. I got a scholarship here, so I moved with my grandma, who raised me. And what does your grandma do? She's an amazing healer. She cures people with herbal medicines and different techniques. So she's not a real doctor? N no, not in the typical sense. And this healer thing it makes her enough money mom stop it's okay yeah she earns enough and i work at the cinema and i also dj on the weekends we manage to take care of each other there was an uncomfortable silence and charlie felt his face turning hot then maddie's mom spoke with her country accent that's sweet honey you seem like a brat kid and i'm sure you'll go places one day it's funny how life turns around i mean look at me i was raising little maddie as a single teenage mom in a trailer park with nothing and then, boom, one day I won the freaking lottery and we were rich. Soon after, I met my husband and life's amazing now. Let's raise a toast. Our blessing. Brianna looked over at Madison, who looked like she was going to crush her glass. She always felt ashamed of her past and that she wasn't born rich like everyone else. Just then, Amber said she wasn't feeling well. And as she was leaving, she tripped over the carpet and fell down. Amber, are you okay? Did you hit your head? No, I didn't. But it hurts so bad lately. And even my eyes. Like, sometimes I wake up and it takes me like two seconds to see the light. And I swear the lights are on. You know, I'm a scared cute mouse, right? I don't sleep in the dark. Okay. I'm gonna take her to her room to rest. When Madison returns later to the main hall, she suddenly overheard Brianna's mom and another woman talking. <laughs> that woman sure loves to tell her trailer park story. She's been rich for years now, but she still sounds so trashy. Money can't buy class. And now look at Madison's choice of boyfriend. I mean, he's sweet, but no amount of designer clothes can hide where you really come from. Madison's ear burned as she stormed off and ran straight into Charlie in the hallway. Hey, I was looking for you. How's Amber? Why did you say all that nonsense at dinner? What? Oh. I'm on scholarship, and I work at the cinema, and my granny does voodoo. It's not voodoo. And why would I hide all that? It doesn't embarrass me. And even your mom was poor, and she's not ashamed of it. Well, she should be. I don't know why she keeps telling that story so proudly. No one respects her for it. And I don't want to be reminded of the cheap start of my life. She said all that stuff because of you. I've been trying to please you all day, Maddie, but I'm really tired now. I hate skiing, these clothes are pretentious, and I don't like talking about my grandma like that. Charlie stormed off to his room, packed his thing, and called a cab. Charlie didn't speak to Maddie for a few days, but he gave in after all her apologies. I'm really sorry, okay? I just wanted my stepdad to like you, and he's a bit <sighs> difficult. But I shouldn't have asked you to act differently. I like you, just as you are. Well, if you really want to make it up, you'll have to spend more time with my family now. Uh, of course. I volunteer at the community center for old people and take grandma there every Saturday. You should come. Can't wait. Madison had begged Brianna and Amber to accompany her. Eek. 
Oh, this place smells like disease and something rotten. Shut up, Maddie, and just act normal. After they'd all met, Charlie asked Maddie to help him set up a game of musical chairs while Brianna joined his grandma. I'm so glad to meet you, girl. Charlie was certain he wouldn't make any friends at his new school. You phrased a pretty nice guy. Oh, trust me, I didn't do much. That kid was born with a heart of gold. Once when he was eight, he came home saying he'd lost his bicycle somewhere. And I was so mad. Well, a week later, I found him three streets down, teaching a little girl how to ride the bicycle. He told me that she'd lost her brother recently, and the cycle made her happy. She needed it more than he did. That's what he said. Hey, he always been special. Later that night, Brianna's heart felt heavy when she got Charlie's text. Thanks for today, Maddie. It meant the world to me, and I love you. I love you too, Charlie. The next day, when Brianna showed Maddie the text, she was ecstatic. Finally! The three golden words! Uh, it's time for phase three of Project Plaything! Dump his sorry butt! Yay! Then sushi in Tokyo! But Maddie, he really cares about you, and dumping him out of the blue feels cruel. Can't we think of an easier way to let him down? But this was always the plan. Are we supposed to care about his feelings now? Well, yeah, we've gotten to know him, and I just think he would take this really hard. You know what? You're right. He is a bit oversensitive. Maybe I can be really difficult the next few weeks, and then he'll just get sick of me and be happy to break up. That sounds better. Thanks. After Brianna walked away, Madison turned to Amber. Who does she suddenly think she is, Mother Teresa? I'm tired of Charlie, and I want to pay him back for the times he was rude to me. I have the perfect plan to dump that loser. But don't say anything to Brianna, okay? Oh, I love it when we have secrets. Just the two of us. Three days later, it was Madison's birthday, and she was having a big party in a dance club with Charlie as DJ. Then suddenly, she climbed onto a table with a mic. May I have everyone's attention, please? I have something to say to our resident DJ. Everyone fell silent, and Brianna suddenly had a horrible feeling. As you all know, I've turned 17 today, and I just want to start this year fresh. So, Charlie, I'll start with you, because I just can't fake things anymore. You were just a game to me, okay? To us. I got bored, so my girls and I decided to make you fall in love with me as a challenge. Actually, Brianna was the one who brought you to my attention. It's been fun messing around with you, but it's just made me realize that dating below my league isn't for me. I don't relate to you and your third world problems, dude. But thanks for a few fun weeks, and I'm sure you'll find a nice average girl soon. Ciao! Charlie just stared at her, frozen in his place. Joke, right? This doesn't make any sense. He suddenly looked over at Brianna, who looked pale. His head started spinning. I need to get out of here. He threw his headphones aside and started running, but then <gasps> tripped and crashed to the floor. Suddenly, Brianna was by his side, helping him up, but he pushed her away. Madison and Amber were laughing like hyenas, and then someone put on a song, and they all started dancing again. Brianna marched over Madison and pulled her aside. How could you do this, Maddie? You said you'd let him down easy. No, Bree. I said I'd crush him like a bug once he fell for me. And you thought I was brilliant then. What changed? What changed is that we found out he's a really nice guy. He didn't deserve that. Not my problem. I wasn't gonna keep dating him just because you suddenly decided to become a humanitarian. Now, please, don't create a scene at my party. Tears stung Brianna's eyes. She remembered Charlie's heartbroken faith, and she left immediately. Brianna didn't know how she was gonna face Charlie in school the next day, but he didn't show up. He wouldn't reply to any text or call, and he didn't come the entire week. Yes! I checked, and my pivot plane is free this weekend. They're going to Tokyo, please. What? Why? Well, Project Plaything is successfully over, and I promised Anne I'd take her for sushi, remember? Right. Well, consider me out of this plan. Brianna walked off, and a smirk spread across Madison's face. You thinking what I'm thinking, Amber? If you're thinking about what being by a butterfly feels like, then yes. No. I mean, about Brianna. Why do you think she isn't in any mood to celebrate with us? Maybe she's racist and doesn't like sushi. Or maybe she's in love with that trashy Charlie. Ew, who looks trash? Looks like our Bree Bree does. Imagine crushing on someone with that social status. You know, maybe you're right. When we were at the resort, I saw those two sneaking out at five morning. I had a headache and I went down to love some gummy bears. They always make me feel better. Maybe Charlie loves her too. Of course he doesn't. 
He fell for me, not her. She's pathetic for wanting him. That evening, Brianna went to the cinema, and she was relieved to find Charlie Towner. She walked in, her heart pounding. Hey, Charlie. He looked up at her coldly. Can, can we talk? Do you moment? He walked out from behind the counter and went outside, and Brianna followed. How dare you show up at my workplace and force me to talk to you? I just need a chance to explain and apologize. Please. I know how you must feel. How could you possibly know that when you're heartless? How evil are you and how empty are your lives that you decided to hurt someone just for fun? Charlie, you're right. It was cruel. Not only did the girl that I thought I loved completely humiliated me, I also find out that the person who acted like my friend is a snake. Don't say that, please. I thought you'd listen. Hi, because I'm a nice guy, so you thought I'd you feel better after treating me like dirt? And why are you here apologizing now? I, I know I was a part of the whole thing, but then I got to know you, and I didn't want to do it anymore. Especially after all those late night calls. That was you? So I never talked to Madison on the phone? No, that was all me. And you and I, we have some connection. What are you talking about? I don't even know you. Just leave me alone. I can't take this anymore. Charlie down against the wall with his head buried in his arms. Just then, his colleague came running out. He's been having a very hard time. Please, don't make it worse. Just go. Brianna turned and ran away, her heart about to burst. On Monday, Brianna was sitting on the bleachers in football practice when she saw Charlie walk onto the field. Oh, thank God, he's back. Hey, kid, where have you been all week? I had a family emergency, and I'm quitting the team, sir. No, Charlie! You're so talent! I'm sorry, but I have a scholarship to maintain, and it's all I can film right now. Thank you for giving me an opportunity, though. I was expecting to run off like a scaredy little cat soon enough. <laughs> no trash talk, Elijah. All right, let's take a break, everyone. Just then, Madison and Amber came and sat on the bleachers, and Charlie made eye contact with Maddie for a few seconds, then walked off. Wow, he really looks heartbroken over me. And to me, or does Charlie look kinda hot with that broody cold face? He was just too nice before, like a puppy. Looked like a loser before, looks like a loser now. I just knew you couldn't be dating him for real. <laughs> he's twice the guy you'll ever be. You said something, Brianna? Yeah, I said, he's twice the guy you'll ever be. Oh, really? How'd you reach the conclusion? Well, firstly, he's clearly better than you at football. Secondly, he's definitely smarter than you. Thirdly, he's a pretty cool DA. And fourth, and most importantly, He's not some arrogant, self absorbed jerk like you who makes me cringe every time I look at him. There was a stunned silence as everyone stared at Brianna, Elijah first to grin. Feisty. I like that. So how about we go on third date and you can continue talking about there? Not even in your dreams. As Brianna started walking off, Elijah blocked her way to tease her. But she suddenly pushed him with unexpected force. He fell down a couple of steps and his knee hit the ground hard. What is wrong with you? Brianna looked just as shocked by what she'd done. At the dinner table, Brianna's dad was cheerfully trying to make conversation, but Brianna seemed lost. Just then, her mom walked in, looking mad. Brianna, do you just enjoy making my life difficult? Look, if this is about Elijah, you pushed him down the bleachers? He was pestering me, so I just pushed him away. I didn't mean for him to fall. He's hurt his knee seriously, and he's on bed rest for two months. His mother, my new business partner, is furious. If she pulls out her investment, she said it was an accident. Surely his mom would understand. Well, it's not like Brianna hasn't rejected Elijah or been rude to him before. I don't expect his mom to understand anything. I don't care what his mom thinks because you don't care about me. I've built everything for you. But no, you'd rather be an actress. And now you're upon ruining. Oh, God, I can't have this conversation again. Just because I don't want your company doesn't mean I don't care about you. And stop trying to make me feel bad. If any consolation, I feel terrible already. Brianna stormed off with her mom staring after her. She's always been difficult, but something extra has been going on with her lately. I never thought she'd be violent. That's an exaggeration. And you never try to actually talk to her. She doesn't talk to me. I'm going to ask her friends what's up with her. Charlie had returned to school, but he just kept his head down, talked to no one, and pretended Brianna didn't exist. She kept her distance from him, but she also found excuses to stay away from Amber and Maddie. One day, she was reading in the empty gym during recess when Madison snatched her book. Come on, Bree, this is getting ridiculous. It's time for an intervention. What? We know you're going through something. Even your mom is so worried. 
I told her you've been avoiding us too. And well, I think I know what the problem is. You lied to me about your breakup with Charlie and I'm mad. But it's not just that, right? I think you have feelings for him. Yes, I have feelings, cause I'm not a robot. And I'm also mad at myself for being a part of this horrible plan. It's making me think about the kind of people we are. Kind who like to have fun. We have everything, Maddie. And we decided to pick on the poor orphan who's working hard to support his grandma for fun? Who the heck cares? I care. I don't want to be this person, and I don't want to have friends like that either. So, are you saying you don't want to be a Barbie angel anymore? Yeah, I don't. And for the record, that's a really stupid name. Wow, you're so ungrateful. When you came to school as a nobody, I made you one of the most popular girls. And in case you've forgotten, I got you your first audition. How could I forget? You never let me. Yes, you got me the audition, but I got the role because of my talent, and it's not a good enough reason for me to follow you and do whatever you say anymore. We're done. Oh, if you think... Just then, Amber fell to the floor with a thud. Amber, get up! That's not funny! But Amber was unresponsive. She'd actually fainted. They immediately rushed her to the hospital, where she regained consciousness, and the doctors ordered some tests. Oh my... It feels like there are a thousand cactuses inside. You're gonna be okay. Just go, Brianna. It's not like you care. You made her faint by stressing her out. You were the one shouting at me. Please, both of you, shut up. All of Amber's tests turned out clear. Her parents even sent her reports to the best doctors around the world, but no one could figure out her problem. Meanwhile, her headaches and fainting spells continued. But one day, Brianna's mom brought up something unexpected while visiting Amber. Someone at work had a back problem, and she swears this healer fixed her after the doctors gave up. I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but maybe you could try it? At this point, we'll try anything. Who's this healer? Well, these girls know her grandson. It's Charlie's <gasps> grandma. Amber's parents went over to Charlie's house, and they were told she can't see them. What did you expect? She hates us, of course. Why is she making this personal? Why won't she help someone if she can? Look, maybe if we go in there and convince her how sorry we are, she might listen. Fine. The three girls went over to Charlie's place one evening, and to their dismay, Charlie opened the door. What are you doing here? Don't flatter yourself. We're not here for you. We want to talk to your grandma. She doesn't have time for people like you. I made that clear before. Charlie, please. I need your grandma to take a look at me. Something's really wrong with my head. You got that right. We're not messing around, really. Amber is suffering, and the doctors can't figure out what's wrong. Not my problem. You people are rich enough to find someone else. Just leave me and my grandma alone. Wait, I'll see her. No, you, you don't have to do that, Grandma. Step aside, Charlie. Charlie stormed off angrily, while Grandma led the girls to her healing room. After Amber described all her symptoms, Grandma made her lie down and prepared her healing herbs, then started a strange ritual on her as the others watched. Once she was done, Grandma made Amber drink some tea. How do you feel, dear? I feel good. My head feels lighter, like there was a whale sitting on it before and now it's jumped off. I haven't felt like this in weeks. Thank you, thank you. Grandma told her to come for two more sessions and the girls got ready to leave. I, I need to apologize to you for what we did. Maybe you think I'm lying, but I really am sorry. I wish I could take it back. I don't think you're lying, Brianna. I'll see you girls soon. After they left, Grandma found Charlie sulking in his room. You turned away Amber before, too. I wasn't expecting this from you, Charlie. Why does everyone keep expecting me to be an angel? You know what they did. They're awful. But it's my duty to heal people, whether they're awful or not. And what they did was wrong. But you have to let go of the anger and move on. I'm trying, Grandma. I really am. I just feel so stupid. How could I let someone treat me so badly and humiliate me? It's because you see the good in people. Yeah, it's called being an idiot. Don't lose that heart of gold, kid. You'll find the right person one day who will really love you for it. Charlie decided not to let the spoiled brats get to him anymore. He worked really hard for the midterms, and when the results came, he was at the top of his class. What are you grinning about, Charlie? Found a golden ticket in a chocolate bar? <laughs> wow, I'm surprised you actually read a book. And I'm just happy about my grades, which have improved since we stopped hanging out together. Maybe your dumbass was rubbing off on me before. You can't talk to me like that. 
Just because your grandma helped Amber doesn't mean you're anything special. You're still a nobody. I'd rather not talk to you at all, Madison. And thanks for making it so easy to move on from you. I can't even remember what I liked in the first place. You go, Charlie. As Charlie walked away, Brianna impulsively called out. Hey, Charlie, wait. What is it? Um, I just wanted to say... Thank you to your grandma for helping Amber. I'm sure you already thanked her. Yeah, but I just, I was hoping, Charlie, is there no way we could be friends again? We used to get along so well. But that wasn't real, right? And now I'd never be able to trust a word you say. So yeah, not gonna happen. But really, that was an Oscar-worthy performance. I'm sure you'll have an amazing career as an actress. After Amber's last session, Brianna wanted to thank Charlie's grandma, so she dropped by his place with some gifts when she knew he'd be working. She was surprised to find the front door already open, and she gasped when she saw grandma on the kitchen floor. Oh my god, are you okay? Brianna, what are you doing here? What happened? Shh, not so loud. You have to leave. What? Someone broke into the house, and he's upstairs right now. Please! I don't want to put you in danger. I, I'm not leaving you. Brianna heard the thief coming down the stairs and quickly locked the kitchen door and called 911. He kept kicking the door, but minutes later, when he heard the police siren, he ran out and escaped. From your description, he seems like a crazy homeless guy who's been bothering other people too. We'll get him. Did he hurt you, ma'am? No, I just fell when he pushed me aside, but I'm fine. We should still get a checkup. I should call Charlie. Sweetie. He's out of town for a day. Please don't tell him right now. Well, you can't be here alone for the night. I'll be just fine. But Brianna was so persistent that Grandma had to give in. Brianna took her home and made her comfortable in one of the guest rooms. You should have asked me before inviting your guest. Maybe I would have liked to say no. Mom, she cured Amber. Letting her stay for one night is a pretty small thing to do. Charlie hurried over to Brianna's house as soon as he was back. Hey, is Grandma okay? She wasn't hurt, right? She's completely fine, but she's asleep right now. You can come in and wait. Uh, I'm fine right here. Charlie sat down on the porch seat, and Brianna turned to go back in. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I just want to thank you. Grandma told me on the phone how brave you were, and you didn't leave her. And then you brought her here, and you didn't have to, but I'm so grateful. What? Uh, what? Why are you smiling at me like that? You sound like the old Charlie today, the one who talks too much. I missed him. Brianna, this doesn't fix everything. I appreciate what you did, but I'm wondering even now why you helped Grandma. Why do you want to be friends with me? Why are you trying all the time to make up for what you did? Brianna gulped and walked closer to him. There's something I need to get off my chest, so just hear me out, okay? Somehow, getting to know you has changed me, Charlie. You're the sweetest, kindest guy I've ever met, and nothing has ever hurt me more than hurting you. But you know what? It started feeling really bad even when you were still dating Maddie, because I realized that I was falling for you. I know I don't have the right to say that, but I just had to or I'd explode. And I know you don't feel the same way, and it's okay. But I'm in love with you, that's all. Brianna turned to leave, but suddenly, Charlie took her hand. Charlie took her hand, and then, to her shock, he kissed her. Brianna's mom spotted the two kissing on the porch and stormed off angrily. I knew these beggars were going to be a nuisance. Everyone in school was shocked to see Brianna and Charlie walking into the hallway holding hands, and all anyone could talk about at recess was the brand new couple, and Madison and Elijah were pissed. I always knew Brianna wasn't really one of us, and she's proved how low class she is. To think that she had a chance with someone like me, and she chose that gutter rat. Trash likes garbage. But later in the hallway, Amber caught up with Charlie and Brianna and gave them a hug. You guys are so cute together, and I'm so happy for you. Really? I'm pretty sure I heard you call us trash and garbage. That's just an act from Maddie. You know how she gets. But I always knew you'd end up together. I have an eighth sense about these things. Like an octopus. Just then, Elijah and Maddie walked into the hallway and Amber jumped back. Ew, it hurts my face to look at you two. When I become president one day, I will ban scholarships for poor people in rich schools. She winked at them as she walked off, and Charlie and Brianna couldn't <laughs> help laughing. A few days later, Brianna and Charlie were hanging out in their favorite park, and Charlie could see Brianna seemed distracted. Brianna, don't freak out, but 
that there's a giant tarantula next to your head. Yeah, sounds cool. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> I was kidding. Where are you lost today? It's nothing. Well, it's not nothing. Ugh. Here, read this critic's review on the latest Stargirl episodes. It's awful. You can't be taking this seriously. You don't sound like you have a half a brain, and your acting isn't underwhelming. Come on, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yes, he does. And I know the show isn't the best, but I had to start somewhere, right? Of course. And people love it. Except that the show's ratings are tanking, and the next season might be canceled. <sighs> Maybe Mom was right all along, and I'm just kidding myself with this acting business. No, you're brave to pursue your dream, and you're lucky you get to do that without worrying about money. Don't give up on it. Well, there is something I've been thinking about to boost ratings. Don't judge me, okay? I have this doctor who I could pay to make fake medical records and say I have a serious disease. People would feel a lot of sympathy for a young, suffering actress, and it would jump up the view. It's a reality show, so you'd act like you're sick? Yeah, just to spice things up. All reality shows do stuff like that. How much would this cost? Um, like $200,000? Wow, okay, so you'd really just spend so much money on that? You're judging me, aren't you? I didn't say anything. He lay back down and fell quiet, and Brianna looked over at him. If you had $200,000 right now, what would you do with it? You know when I was away some weeks ago? I went back to my hometown to meet an old friend. Well, we've been working on an app together. I think we have a really good idea, so yeah, I'd, I'd invest in that. Then that's what I'll be doing with my $200,000. What? No, I wasn't asking for money, Brianna. I don't want charity. It's a loan. You said the app is promising. I'm sure you'll be able to pay me back. Do you really mean that? <sighs> Please, you're saving me from spending it on something stupid. I really mean it. Charlie stared at her, then let out an excited whoop and hugged her as she laughed. A few days later, Charlie walked into the boys' locker room to find the coach and Elijah sitting on a bench looking pale. Coach, you called me? Charlie, I know this is a lot to ask, but we have the season's biggest game next week, and Elijah still can't play. He's hurt himself in practice, and we need a captain. It'd be a huge favor to the team. Otherwise, we're out. Elijah was seething with rage, but Charlie just couldn't turn down the coach. Of course, sir. I'll see you at practice. On the day of the match, Charlie played his heart out as team captain, and when he scored the winning goal against the school's biggest rivals, the whole crowd erupted into cheers. He ran over to Brianna in the stands and kissed her in front of everybody. Then his teammates carried him away on their shoulders while he waved the trophy happily. After celebrating with the team, Charlie headed out of school. He was just a couple of blocks away when someone pushed him into an alley. He looked up to see a couple of thugs, and behind them was Elijah. What are you doing? No, Charlie, what are you doing? You've really picked the wrong guy to mess with, haven't you? I'm not messing with you, man. I helped your team because you couldn't play. Now you want to beat me up for that? I couldn't play because your girlfriend caused my injury, and you're to blame. She rejected me and insulted me because of you. She rejected you before she even met me, because you're a jerk. <sighs> You little weasel. You might be flying high right now, but I've been trying to warn you, you don't belong here. And what makes you think Brianna is so different suddenly? How can you be sure she isn't making a fool of you again? I'm sure. Now back off. I'm the school's hero right now. I don't think you want to mess with me. Elijah looked ready to punch him, but some kids passed by the alley just then, and he stepped away. This isn't over. Two days later, the school was holding its annual spring dance, and Brianna walked into the gym looking for Charlie, who had said he'd meet her there. She saw Maddie, Amber, and Elijah glaring at her from a corner, then turned away to spot Charlie talking to someone. Hey, there you are. You look good. She leaned in to kiss him, but he gently pushed her away. We need to talk. I can't delay it any longer. Okay, you sound serious. What is it? Brianna, I'm breaking up with you. What? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Do I look like I'm joking? Charlie, come on, what are you doing? I said I'm breaking up with you. I, I don't understand. Can we please... Are you really as dumb as everyone says? I thought you were the smartest of the Barbie angels. Did you really think I was in love with you? No, Brianna, I was just playing your game. When you told me how you were desperately in love with me, I saw it as the perfect chance to take revenge. I decided to make you believe I loved you too, and then dump you publicly just like you girls did. Brianna stared at him speechlessly as everyone stared at them. Then Charlie walked closer and leaned in. How does that feel? being fooled and humiliated. I thought you should experience it. Oh, also one more thing. I won't be returning the $200,000 I borrowed from you. I've spent it already, treating myself to some nice things. I figured it's fair compensation for everything you've put me through. With that, Charlie left while Brianna stood frozen in her spot. Suddenly, she found Amber by her side. Come on, let's get out of here.
As they walked out into the hallway, they heard Madison cackling loudly behind them. <laughs> wow, that was epic! I've never respected Charlie more in my life! He really played a number on you, Bree Bree. And Amber, get away from her! She's not your friend anymore! Brianna didn't respond and continued walking away. We really broke him, didn't we, Brianna? Turned a perfectly nice guy into a heartless jerk. <laughs> now that's a high school project I'll always remember. Suddenly, Brianna turned around and lunged at her. Madison screamed as she tried to fight Brianna off. A few kids, including Amber, finally managed to pull them apart. God knows I've been wanting to hit you since the day I met you. And that's a memory I will cherish for years. Brianna turned away and ran out, breaking out into sobs. Brianna refused to go to school and just stayed in bed for days, feeling completely miserable. One morning, a maid brought her a letter. It was from Charlie. She anxiously ripped it open, and the check she'd given him for $200,000 fell out. He didn't even use it. He was just teasing me. I really don't get this jerk. He's completely messed me up. She buried her head in her arms and started to cry, but then she stopped and picked up the check. I don't care what Charlie thinks of me. I'm gonna use this to save my show. She jumped out of bed, stuffed the check in her bag, and put on her coat. A few days later, Charlie and Grandma were watching the local news on TV, when suddenly, Brianna's face appeared on the screen with the headline saying, Young TV star diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Charlie stared in shock, then his face darkened. Poor girl. That's terrible news. Charlie, I don't know what happened between you two, but I think we should go see her. She's lying. What do you mean? She's not sick, Grandma. This is all an act to get ratings and views for her show. What? No, she wouldn't do that. Why do you have to assume the worst about people lately? Because they are the worst. She told me of her plan to do this herself. Well, she must have some reason. Brianna isn't like that. Yes, she is. Why do you need to see the good in everyone, Grandma? Least of all these people. They're awful and shallow, and they think people like us are more worthless than the gum stuck to their shoes. I made a huge mistake convincing you to attend this school. I thought nothing could ever change you, but I was wrong. I hardly recognized recognize you these days, Charlie. Grandma walked out before Charlie could say another word. A few days later, Brianna was told someone had come to see her downstairs. She made sure she looked pale and walked weakly into the lounge to find Elijah sitting next to her mom. What are you doing here? Mom, I told you, I feel too sick to have visitors. Brianna, please sit down. This is important. Brianna, we both know you haven't been very nice to me, but I've always cared about you. It just crushed me the way that poor scumbag humiliated you. What do you want, Elijah? Oh, I don't want anything, but I brought you something that will really teach Charlie the lesson he deserves. That day at the spring dance, one of the kids standing close to you made a video. Elijah handed her his phone, and Brianna stared at it in shock to see Charlie caught on camera saying, How does that feel? Being fooled and humiliated. I thought you should experience it. Oh, also one more thing. I won't be returning the $200,000 I borrowed from you. I've spent it already, treating myself to some nice things. I figured it's fair compensation for everything you've put me through. Brianna, when were you going to tell me about this? If Elijah hadn't shown me this video, I would never have checked your account and known that $200,000 have been withdrawn. How dare he threaten to not return your money? Oh God, how can I tell mom that Charlie returned the money? If she asked me where I spent it, I can't tell her I used it to bribe the doctor. Brianna, answer me. Has he been making any other threats? No, mom, he hasn't. Please, I'm just too sick to deal with all this. He'll give it back. Oh, you bet he will. When I sue him, I'll have my lawyer send him a notice today. No! I don't want to do that. Honey, I'm not asking you to be a part of this. You just need to rest. I'll take care of everything. There is no way I'm going to let some good-for-nothing beggar rob us blind. He's treated you very poorly, Brianna. Don't worry, we'll make him pay. Brianna got up and left the room, feeling panicked. When mom accuses Charlie, he'll rat me out. What if the news gets out and everyone discovers that I faked my illness? My reputation will be ruined for good. Oh God, what have I done? The next night, Charlie found a courier at his door, handing him over a legal notice to appear in court the next morning. It was served by Brianna's mother, accusing him of stealing $200,000. He crumpled the paper and threw it aside, holding his head in his hands. Moments later, he got up and looked at himself in the mirror. I gave her back the money and she used that to bribe the doctor. But of course she didn't tell her mom and now she's too scared to tell the truth. So her mom thinks I still have the money and I'm some thief. If I said the truth, Brianna's reputation would be ruined. Ugh, I won't stand a chance against people like them in court. Why should I suffer anymore because of Brianna? I shouldn't even go.
But I will, because I'm in love with her. The next morning in court, Brianna nervously stole glances at Charlie as she sat next to her mom and Elijah. Charlie just sat there, blankly, not turning to her once. Would the plaintiff's lawyer please read out the charges made against the defendant? The defendant, Mr. Charlie, is accused of the theft of $200,000 from Miss Brianna. We have submitted video evidence where he admits himself that he has no intention to return money given to him as a loan. The defendant is also accused of bullying and harassing Miss Brianna, causing severe emotional and psychological damage. We have submitted documents of Miss Brianna's recent illness, triggered by extreme distress. Objection, Your Honor. Is there any medical evidence to prove that? Your Honor, I know it's not my place to speak, but as a mother, I simply cannot stay silent. My only child has fallen extremely sick after being harassed by him. Her school, her work, her health, everything has been affected by his actions. Her doctors will vouch for it. And people like Charlie are predators who prey on the feelings of rich young women to get money out of them. He must be made to pay for it. Brianna's mom <laughs> burst into tears as she took her place, while Brianna stared at her in shock. She's a better actress than I am. Would the defendant like to say something in response to that? Charlie rose from his seat, slowly. No, Your Honor. Did you intend to return the $200,000? No, Your Honor. And do you believe your actions have caused Miss Brianna psychological and emotional damage? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Young man, do you understand that the charges against you are very serious? If you are unable to return the loaned money as well as damages, you could land for two years in prison. Charlie looked up and hung his head. I understand, Your Honor. Very well. Since you have pleaded guilty on all counts, the court gives you a day to arrange $500,000 or face prison. No! No! This is enough! Brianna! What are you doing? What I should have done before. Your Honor, I want to immediately withdraw this case. There is no case against Charlie. He returned the money, and I spent it on bribing a doctor to say that I'm sick. I did it to increase ratings and views for my stupid show. Everyone stared at Brianna in shock. Why would you? How could you lie to me like this? Because you've made me feel like I'm a failure as an actress, and I just wanted to fix things on my own. I was feeling down, and I wasn't thinking clearly. It was desperate and stupid, and I would have never told you but this has gone too far. Young lady, you will be fined for wasting the court's time. I understand, Your Honor, and I will pay it, and I am so sorry. Case dismissed. The judge walked out of the courtroom, and Brianna held up a hand to her mom. We'll talk, but not now. Please, just leave me alone, Mom. Just go. Brianna's mom and Elijah stormed off, and soon, it was just Charlie and Brianna in the room. And suddenly, Brianna pushed him really hard. Oh my god, what is your problem? You! I swear, Charlie, I don't understand you one bit. Yeah, I wouldn't expect someone like you too. If you hate me so much, why were you about to go to freaking jail for me instead of telling the truth? You answered your question yourself, but I'll give you a few minutes to figure it out. I know you're slow. What are you saying? You don't hate me? Charlie just looked at her and she started to cry. If you don't hate me, Charlie, then why did you break my heart? Because I became a monster, Brianna. I just couldn't get over how you girls used me for entertainment. I was just so consumed by anger and revenge. But after I broke up with you, I realized that hurting someone you love is the worst feeling in the world. I just couldn't expose your secrets and make you look bad, and I'm really sorry for how I've treated you. So am I. I hate the things we've done to each other. Listen, do you think there's any chance that we can start over? No drama, no games, no lies, because I really love you, Brianna. I know your way out of my league, I always knew that. And you could find someone else ten times richer and handsomer, like you deserve to be with some movie star. But I swear I'll try to be cooler and I won't ever hurt you again, and if you let me out- How do I get you to stop talking? I'll even work on that. It's a nervous tick. I'll go to a therapist and- I have a better idea. And with that, Brianna leaned in and kissed him.